You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. My first guest this morning is Orla Roach from Wexford Equestrian. Orla, you might start by telling me a bit about your own background, please. Uh, well, Carl, it started back a few years ago. Um, I studied hotel management in Shannon. Um, during this time, I gained experience in Switzerland, in New York, Washington, D.C. But basically, I ended up back in my home place in Ross Lair. Um, I came back here with my now husband, Patrick, um, who also had a background in catering management. And we came back to run the family hotel, which, as many people probably know of it, it's Tusker House Hotel in Ross Lair in Wexford. And we stepped in um, to run the hotel both of us uh, for a number of years. Unfortunately, in 2003, we had a fire that destroyed the hotel. And at this time, there was various difficulties uh, with getting the hotel back and running. And we just decided that maybe we would move on to something else and developed uh, a guest house in the, the ferry port, which is now ferry port guest house. And that's where I basically was until a couple of years ago, uh, Carl, running that um, and making our business locally with a Chinese restaurant takeaway, that sort of thing. Really, I suppose that's my background up until the last couple of years. And then obviously I moved into Wexford Equestrian, which is where we are here today. Tell me a bit about Wexford Equestrian. Well, what we are is we've just literally opened. Uh, We're only open about four weeks now. It's a show venue that has an 80 by 40 metre indoor arena, two large outdoor all-weather arenas, both on sand. It can accommodate show jumping, dressage, cross-country. We have one of the only cross-country arenas in the country which facilitates horses jumping, coffins, cross-country fences on an all-weather sand surface. So facilitates basically people to work their horses and compete their horses all year round, regardless of the weather and regardless of um, the, the, the outdoor um, conditions. The indoor arena, I suppose, is the main focus of our facility. And that houses a, a really nice cafe lounge facilities, reception areas, showers, toilets and all-weather parking for lorries and boxes to come as well as the main focus which is the indoor uh, arena with a huge mezzanine 80 metre by 10 metre viewing area. So, you know, hopefully it's an indoor arena that can facilitate a lot of different uh, purposes as well. I had the opportunity to go out and visit the facility in the last couple of days and it's a tremendous facility, I have to say. Uh, Certainly a very ambitious facility, I would say, in today's market. Tell me, where did the idea come from to build this? Well, it was quite recent, really. Um, Myself and my husband, Pat, um, as I say, we live here in Tom Haggart and this is where we're based. We had a love of horses, um, but mostly it was for pleasure riding, competing as a pastime. It was a hobby. Uh, We just noticed with this that there was a lack of top class facilities to cater for our market, particularly in the area of competition and in the equestrian circuits. And also the lack of all weather venues to cater for even the wettest days. Um, As you can imagine, this, this last summer was definitely one of them. Um, that's where the idea came from, just from our own experience. And we just decided to investigate it further and look into the possibility of doing something and to see if it would be a feasible business opportunity for the future. So Orla, what market research was completed in order to identify and establish whether this was a sustainable business model or not? Well, marketing is definitely a challenging part of any business um, and in order to discover if there is a business there at all, we actually went and looked around to see what supports were out there um, to assist us in this area and we found Wexford Local Development and in particular um, the the project officers there were very fantastic um, to to help us and, and guide us. One of the criteria that they came back to us with was that we should possibly do a feasibility study um, to identify the the market and identify if this was a feasible business option. Uh, We did that. Uh, We went to a a local company here in Wexford who helped us compiling that feasibility study. Um, What a feasibility study actually does is it allows you to go to all the markets that you're proposing to aim at and discover if they feel that your product that you would offer them is actually something that they will use. In other words, you know, if it's like anything, if you set up something, will they buy this product from you and will they come and use your facility? And that's basically uh, what we did. So Orla, once you had the feasibility study completed and you identified that there was a market there for your service, what was the next step? Well, we decided then to go ahead and apply for grant aid from WLD in Wexford. Uh, Part of that process is obviously then to compile a business plan. Um, This is quite a lengthy process and involved obviously getting quotations, 
letters of intent, sending out research questionnaires to all of the organisations nationally and locally that would be possibly availing of our facility, not only to equestrian sports, but non-equestrian sports, because this is obviously a market that we're going to try and head for as well. We developed the business model, put the business plan together and then sent in our application to WLD, which obviously had to be approved. Uh, thankfully, it was. And um, we now have a project that's worth over a million uh, euro, which we have now started, obviously started work on in the last year. And we completed then about four weeks ago on the 12th of August when we had our first actual show. It's no secret that the equestrian industry itself has been very hardly hit over the last number of years since the recession has come in. Is that going to have any bearing on your project? Well, obviously, any recession is bearing on anybody's business, but we started this within a recession. Um, whether it be good or bad, obviously, that helped us in the building side of things. Um, we are aware of that, but I do feel that um, horses um, are a pastime for people. They are also a livelihood for people. Um, they are always in, in the area. Wexford is a very strong contingency of people with horses, both sport horses and racing horses. So, I mean, I think we know what we've got into here and we've put that into our business model. And that's we have our marketing and our ideas on how to promote this. And uh, obviously we feel it'll work because otherwise we wouldn't be here today. But Orla, it's very well reported across all media that horse ownership across the country has, has reduced significantly over the last number of years. What are your thoughts on that? I would absolutely agree in some areas, Carl. Um, in the urban areas of Dublin, Wicklow, obviously the high cost of livery and keeping a horse has become a burden on many people and therefore possibly they, they now don't own horses when they did in, in the past. But in Wexford and our rural communities here, a lot of people have land and have access to land. So, you know, they do like to keep their hobbies. They need something to keep them sane in these times. They go to work every day and they work hard. They like to come home and their pastimes are their horses. It becomes a lot easier to keep a horse when you have the facilities at home to do so. And you don't have the high costs of the livery that are incurred when you don't have a land in, in, your, in your house around you. So I do feel that there are still quite a lot of people, particularly in our area, that do still have horses and they just want to have a facility that they can use throughout the year for them and enjoy it and, and get them out of their day-to-day their -day working environment. So Orla, who's this facility aimed at? Well, we've built it in such a way that will cover pretty much all of the equestrian spheres. Um, these would include show jumping, dressage, eventing, showing, pony clubs, riding clubs, training, clinics, sales, pretty much every avenue of the horse industry, um, the, the basically the sport horse industry more so, in the country. Um, we also have a, a non-core market which would be aiming out of the non-equestrian field which could include various uh, different ideas such as trade stands, corporate promotions. Uh, the facility is an indoor facility so it can house a lot of um, machinery shows, anything that needs a big facility that will take indoors and also have a viewing gallery for spectators to watch and look at. So we're open to any ideas. So we're hoping to hit a multiple of, of, of areas and markets uh, with what we have here today. Orly, you seem to clearly know who your target market is. Now, how are you going to set about creating awareness with them and attracting them to the facility? Well, marketing is obviously a very challenging part of any business um, because if people don't know you exist, then you pretty much don't have any customers. Uh, there are a lot of supports out there, WLD in particular, um, we have dealt with. They, they offer a lot of other services, such as courses, um, such as mentoring, the enterprise boards, educational supports. Um, they have courses on advertising business, online marketing resources. They're very, very beneficial to use and I strongly suggest that people do their research and use what's out there. But I obviously believe that the traditional methods are very important to, to look at. Southeast Radio obviously um, has a huge following and can really help to get your message across newspapers. Facebook is one of the major tools we use at the moment. Uh, we haven't developed our website yet, so I find it very good uh, for networking with people that actually want to know about your business. Um, emailing the industries. I obviously have a lot of contacts over the years with pony clubs, riding clubs and all the national organisations. Orla, this is certainly a business that probably takes more commitment than most other sectors to develop in, purely because it's a seven day a week job. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to have a passion for whatever you do to make it work. Um, I do believe it's important to believe in what you're doing. And I love horses. My family, uh, Pat and myself, are both love what we do. We wouldn't be able to get up every morning and do this seven days a week if we didn't. But then 
I have to be realistic. Um, there's no point in me loving what I do if I can't produce a product that the customers will love. Um, being a, a customer really in this industry for quite a while, I've seen what I liked in venues. I've seen what I wanted in venues and I've seen what made competitions work. And that's really where I want to go. I want to be able to give that now to my customer. Um, it's challenging um, in saying that, you know, I need to listen to the customer and listen to what they're looking for. In saying that also, the old fashioned experience and mentors that have been around me before in business, it's important to look for them and look at what they're telling me. My own dad has been successful in the entrepreneur area for many years in Rosslare, facing and dealing with customer challenges, running businesses through thick and thin, through difficult times. You know, we wake up in the morning, we've rates, property taxes, charges, all looking at us for money. Um, it it makes, makes business very difficult and very frustrating. Uh, you have to keep thinking of new ways to do things, innovative ways to tackle problems and attractive ways to entice customers. A lot of this sounds very basic, I suppose. Um, but the, the bottom line is, you know, it's coming up with the end result is not easy. And sometimes a few failed ideas coming up with the right ones is important. As long as you learn by your mistakes, we won't always get it right. We won't always be, be spot on with what we come up with. But I think it's important to look at them, deal with them, and then hopefully in the end, we'll, we'll get where we want um, with, with all the hard work. So Orla, as a startup business, what's your ambition for the business for the first 12 months? Well, obviously, um, I would be very confident that we can be moved forward for next year. I'd like to think that every Saturday and Sunday would be booked with some sort of an event. Either we're running ourselves or from a local club, a national organisation. Um, on top of that, I'd like to think we could have something during the midweek, training events, training evenings. Um, and then obviously the non-equestrian sector is an area that I'd like to look into um, and investigate further. Well, Orla, there's certainly no doubt in your passion for the business. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you the very best of luck with Wexford Equestrian. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.